Welcome viewers. Good to back after many months. Due to technical issues, I was not able to bring content. And many of you have supported me through prayer and also by watching and thank you for that. Today, I would like to uh, bring a special guest before you. Uh, his name is Reverend David. I'm, I'm glad that you are here and accepted my invitation to, to speak on righteousness from the book of Romans. And of course, we will be discussing <laughs> and see how it goes well. Okay. So, uh, Reverend David is from Ireland and he's my good friend. And uh, he has taught many times the book of Romans and he's very thorough with the book of Romans. So, I welcome him. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me at all. Um, and you say, of course, that I'm going to be talking about Romans and righteousness. <laughs> righteousness is a big, big topic and it doesn't start in Romans. Of course, uh, definitely. But uh, uh, today our talk will be primarily uh, looking from Romans chapter 1, yeah. verse. Uh, you have uh, 17 and uh, I will be reading uh, first of all and Maybe yeah. we can just proceed in our discussion. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, you can read it. Yeah. yeah. So here it goes. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Mm. And often the, the Bible says, in fact, in the book of Romans says that none is righteous. Mm -hmm. Right? So when Paul is telling in Romans chapter 1, verse 17 for there is an is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith what is that righteousness of God being rebuilt first yeah. of all let's define what is righteousness well that, that's the reason why I said to you that righteousness doesn't just start in Romans because you get the picture of what righteousness is by looking at some of the usages uh, in the Old Testament and then you bring that with you because Paul after all was a Jew and, and his understanding of what he was saying came from there. So many people, and, I, and I've actually looked to see uh, in the dictionary what people actually say about righteousness and I've got three things that people say and of course I'm going to hone in on one but on okay. the three, here's the three. One is that righteousness is the quality of being virtuous, uh -huh. honorable, or morally right. Uh -huh. And it can refer to that type of behavior. It can also be a right relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Then some people, uh, some of the commentators have talked about covenant faithfulness to Israel uh -huh. as a meaning. Yes. Others have said that God's, it's God's justice, especially for the poor and the, the powerless. Uh, and then others will say it's God working to make things right in salvation both now and finally. So it's a big, big topic. Yes, definitely it is a big topic. I and mean, you have brought a wonderful three definitions of the righteousness. And what do you think that which definition would fit in Romans chapter 1? I'm going to go outside of the box. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm going to say I think the word righteousness fits most of the categories if you use instead expected behavior within whatever that relationship so, uh, is, so expected can, behavior. Yes, can you please uh, tell, to, uh, to tell to our viewers what you mean by saying expected behavior? Okay, if for instance um, there was a covenant as there was between Israel and God, there would be expected behavior on behalf of the Israelites and expected behavior on behalf of God, because that's what a covenant is, two people coming into a relationship mm -hmm. and both of them having conditions. Oh. So expected behavior for Israel was obey the commandments. And so being faithful to God. Being faithful to God. And as far as God was concerned, his expected behavior was that he would be faithful to the covenant that he made with them. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you have the uh, uh, the covenant relationship is met through uh, Abraham, and 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 then that faithful. I mean, the covenant support, uh, was to, supposed to be carried out throughout the lives of Israelites, and and they need to be faithful in obedience what God has commanded them to do. That that is true, but. There's a, a very big distinction between what is the nature of righteousness as far as Abraham is concerned 
and the righteousness that uh, you have between Israel and God in the uh, the old covenant. Mm -hmm. Because what it says about Abraham, and this is the, the, the critical thing, what it says about Abraham is that when God gave him the promise, it says that he believed. Yes. And it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, yes. Now, what is the expected behavior of someone whenever God speaks to them? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the expected behavior is that you believe what God says. Yes. So he believed what God says, and God said, that is righteousness. Mm -hmm. And that's the beginning of the new covenant, mm -hmm. the whole issue of trusting, believing what God actually says. Okay. But in the old covenant, the nature of the relationship between God and Israel was obedience and faithfulness on the part of God. Mm -hmm. So basically, what Paul is also doing in the book of Romans chapter 4, where uh, that, uh, as you mentioned, Abraham was credited uh, of the righteousness because of a faith. So you are saying that expected behavior is, is in the Romans chapter 4. Yes. What I'm saying is that the, the change from the old to the new is that in the old, what was expected was obedience. In the new, it's not that there is no obedience in the new, but the first thing is faith, which leads to obedience. And without faith, people are not able to obey. And that's the problem that you find in the Old Testament, that they couldn't obey. Whereas in the new covenant, they are given the means whereby they can obey. So that is what God is looking for. Are you going to trust what I say? Are you going to believe what I say? Mm -hmm. And that if you do, you will find that obedience follows. That's great. Yeah. It's so a that, wonderful. That, that's really, so when it comes into Romans, well, and it says about uh, the, 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 the faithfulness of God or the righteousness of God, mm -hmm. what you're actually talking about there in mm -hmm. Romans is God has finally provided the deliverer that he said he would provide. So he's faithful to his side. Mm -hmm. And in providing it through Jesus Christ, he has now provided also a way for other people to be able to make that connection with God. So that's what salvation is. Okay, uh, uh, viewers, what David was talking about uh, is the faithfulness of God and the righteousness of God. Usually early in the traditions we had, the major theme of the Book of Romans was considered to be the uh, just to live by faith. But then we have a new perspective coming and uh, it's a faithfulness of God. So. Uh, now we are going to discuss on this particular issues where it is fitting on the book of Romans. It's, it's really because of the faithfulness of God that sending Jesus Christ into the world and now he accomplishes that, the covenant relationship with the God and man, yeah. that's the Israel, and uh, finally bringing that righteousness to the yeah. world. Yeah. So what, what has often happened is that people have wanted to talk about righteousness given to us. Mm -hmm. And they've got quite complicated in trying to make that the subject of what's going on in Romans. Mm -hmm. Whereas what's really going on is God mm -hmm. is saying, I have been faithful, mm -hmm. that is my righteousness, I've mm -hmm. provided a deliverer, mm -hmm. and now Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Yes. Why would he not be ashamed? Mm -hmm. Because he's actually got an answer to a long-standing problem. Mm -hmm. He says, God has been faithful, and the gospel now reveals mm -hmm. that there is a deliverer. Mm -hmm. But then he goes on to say uh, that, 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 that God's wrath is against people. Mm -hmm. And any person should ask the question, that's not good news. Mm -hmm. So how are you telling me that God's righteousness as in God is perfect, God is, is holy and so on like that. How is that going to help me? because I'm looking at this situation where I'm full of sin and you're saying that God is righteous. Mm -hmm. That's not a good gospel, that's mm -hmm. not good news. But if you say God is faithful in that he has provided a deliverer, mm -hmm. then why would you need a deliverer? Well, you need a deliverer because you've got sin. Yes. There's a problem mm -hmm. and God has provided the solution. That's a great answer. So we have the faithfulness of Jesus of thought, the Yahweh, yeah. uh, to, to accomplish the uh, the covenant that he made yeah. to the people of Israel and that is carried out throughout yeah. the centuries 
and we got a real problem because the problem is a sin, and none of us are righteous, uh -huh. and we can't even to fulfill the whole co commandment. Okay, even if you look at in the Old Testament, you have 613 commandments, yeah. and that is of course summarized yeah. into into two commandments: loving yeah. God and loving neighbors, yeah. right, with yeah. all the heart and mind and strength. And none of us can, in fact, do it, yeah. right? We we can't love God with all our hearts and minds and strength. Okay. Yeah. And and and. Uh, do you see that God in Jesus, uh, of course, Jesus the man, or, uh -huh. or, or you say that God, man, uh -huh. right, fulfilling that, uh, you know, commandment, accomplishing the righteousness of God and providing to us? Yeah, what well, you see, what, you, what you've got there is Jesus incarnate, mm -hmm. God incarnate. Now, if he's not able as a man to be able to live under all the commandments that have been given in the old covenant mm -hmm. well then why on earth would god be expecting it of somebody who's less perfect than he is mm -hmm. so he's got to provide something perfect and he does mm -hmm. he lives a perfect life mm -hmm. and then he's able to give himself in order to solve the problem of sin mm -hmm. that there is. Yes. And then God is now able to make that connection through Jesus because what he gives to us is the very person of Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. And so the deliverer, if you like, becomes resident within us. Mm -hmm. And that becomes the solution that God wants. Mm -hmm. He wants to be able, people, to be able to follow him because following God is the best thing that a man can do. But if they're not able to do that, then he needs to provide a deliverer and he's faithful and he does that. Oh, great. So do you think that this righteousness is in the judicial form that Paul is talking in Romans chapter 1? Uh, that aspect as well, if we can address. Well, it, it is, there is that aspect. When you, when you, that's why I said it earlier on that it's sometimes important to see how it's used in the Old Testament because mm -hmm. when it talks about a righteous judge, mm -hmm. it's not talking about somebody who is perfect. It's talking about someone who follows the judicial process. Someone, for instance, who doesn't take bribes. Mm -hmm. Someone, for instance, who will listen to both parties and who will give a, a, a proper sentence. That's a, a righteous judge. Mm -hmm. Now, in the same context, if there is sin, Mm -hmm. God has got to deal with that mm -hmm. in a proper manner. He can't yes. just say, hey, let's let's just forget about sin because yes. that's a bit of awkward. Yes. So he has to deal with it and he does deal with it. He deals with it righteously by bringing punishment. Mm -hmm. yes. But he doesn't bring it on people. He brings it on his own son, mm -hmm. which is an amazing thing for God to do. But yeah. in doing it, it delivers us from the possible punishment that would come. Yes, uh, so so the Jesus becomes then lame for, for the whole world, and yep. then he he is the provider of the righteousness to whole mankind. Yeah, well, he is the provider, but sometimes what we want to talk about is as though God gives us a gift, mm -hmm. and we sort of think, yes, God has given me a gift, and I can walk away with that gift. No, no, no. The 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 answer is in Jesus. So it's not that Jesus gives me something and I walk away with it. Mm -hmm. It's rather that I come to Jesus and I'm in him and in him is righteousness and I live my life in him. Mm -hmm. He becomes resident, I'm in him and that's how a person lives uh, the life that they're supposed to live. Mm -hmm. It's not that I go off with someone like a Christmas gift and I go off and play <laughs> with it. Okay, It's not like that uh, at all. Yes, right. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yes. Now, what is that righteousness? That's the thing that, is it perfection? No, it's not. What it is, is seek first the kingdom of God and the way of relating to God, mm -hmm. the expected behavior that God is looking for in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. What is that? Faith. He's looking for people to believe what God said. Basically, he, uh, you're referring that you're accepting the king of a kingdom yes right and and you're believing that jesus is the messiah and whereby uh, god accepts you in his kingdom yes that's how you get into the kingdom yes and 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 that's that's really the whole story there, there's two sides uh but it's joined in one number one there's god is faithful to the promises that he's made he provides a deliverer but Jesus also is faithful in the sense that he 
fully does what his father wants him to do. Mm -hmm. So it's from faith to faith, mm -hmm. as that Romans passage says. Yes, yes. It's from faithfulness of God to the faithfulness of Jesus, which then means that we can have a trust in and a faith in the fact that he's provided something for us. Mm -hmm. So it's all faithfulness or faith, because the word faith or faithfulness is the same in the Greek. So it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, so how how uh, do you think that uh, that the righteousness of Jesus being imputed in the person who believes in Jesus? I I think this transfer and exchange. I mean, it's there definitely there in the scriptures, but sometimes it can be complicated. I think the issue is that everything that God wants is in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Everything that God wants is in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the answer is Jesus, right? What's my problem? I'm not in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So how can I get there? That's what salvation is. Baptism is joining myself to Christ, publicly saying, I want to be part of this person. Yes. So I join myself. Mm -hmm. Well, if I join myself to that person, I become part of him. Yes. So is he righteous? So am I. So you uh, because this, I've got that in here. Yes. So you're requiring uh, uh, the the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I, I guess, and then the, the the Holy Spirit is uniting the one who believes in Jesus Christ, and then you're declared as a righteous person. Well, this this is this is a big this is a big area. The whole issue of baptism in the Holy Spirit, baptism, definitely, of baptism course, baptism in the water, <laughs> yes. and all that sort of thing. Yeah. As far as the scriptures say in Ephesians, it says there's only one baptism. Yes. Now, if you mean there's only one, one in number, <laughs> then the scripture is wrong because there's John's baptism, there's Christian baptism, there's baptism in the Holy Spirit. There's only one that really counts. Mm -hmm. And that is when a person by God is transferred into Jesus. Mm -hmm. That has to be done by the Spirit. And you're the part of that. Uh, the, yes, uh, that is the main thing yes. that happens. All the other things about power and so on like that are an anointing on, on, on a person in order to be able to serve him. Mm. But the main thing is that I get joined to Christ and that happens as a result of the Spirit. That's great. So the, the righteousness, uh, uh, that the, how do we receive the righteousness? It's because by faith. Uh, well, honest, yes, right? yes, we receive it by faith, but we receive it because we receive the person. Definitely. By receiving the person, we receive yes, all yes. that he is. So yes. That's how we, we, we become righteous. Not necessarily the transmitting of the righteousness. No, I think there's a lot the, of talk about yes. the gift of righteousness, whereas I don't think it's saying the gift of righteousness, but rather it's saying righteousness has provided you with a gift. The righteous act of God, the righteousness of Jesus has provided you with a gift. What is that gift? Well, the scriptures say the righteousness, the gift of God is eternal life. Yes. He's given you life. Of course. And the righteousness is what Jesus did in the sense that he followed through what his father asked him to do. He died on a cross. He was faithful to God. He was righteous. And now we join him. Great. So. Uh, I, I see a lot of you have notes on here. So, do you think that anywhere you missed on the notes <laughs> um, <laughs> that you're supposed to tell to our viewers? Well, there's a lot of things here that I, 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 I just to clarify the issue of of righteousness as being behaviour. That's an important thing, and there's a there's a story in the Old Testament about Judah and Tamar. Judah is unrighteous in the sense that he does not provide his son for Tamar. Now Tamar does something that is something that we think is reprehensible. She dresses up as a prostitute. Judah and Tamar have relations together and then Tamar is brought out a, a lot later as being a prostitute because it's obvious she's about to have a baby. And then she shows the reward that had been given by Judah, mm -hmm. his actual staff that he had given to her as a pledge saying, I will definitely give you what you need. And as a result of that, it's obvious that Judah is the, the, the person who has had relations with her. Then he says, she is more righteous than I am. Mm -hmm. Now, a prostitute, she is more righteous than I am. He's not talking about <laughs> obviously of, of purity. Uh -huh. He's talking about she has behaved in a better way than I have. Mm -hmm. 
within the context of I gave you a promise and I didn't keep it, you have acted more righteously than I have. Mm -hmm. That's the behavior that I have displayed is less righteous than yours. It's behavior. In the New Testament, the behavior that God is looking for is actual faith. Mm -hmm. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Faith. Yes, the faith. So the viewers, this was our talk. Uh, it was a wonderful and lovely discussion. So we, I, I have a wonderful uh, time with him all the time. It was a uh, great uh, discussion. And uh, uh, if you have any questions and queries, please do comment below. God bless you.